Welcome to Divine Way TV, where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got some great content for 2022 lined up for you. And today's fan favorite, the one and only, Akis. Cash out rich kid. Cash on Instagram. out rich kid. You feel me? You <laughs> In the building. You already know who that is. That's my brother. Greg Divine. All right, man. And how'd you get the name, man? Where'd the nickname come from? It's Cash stuck. out, man. Honestly, though, man, back in the day when I was making some money doing various things, I was basically just cashing out on vehicles and just basically wasting money. Gotcha. You know okay. And then my uh, one of my partners, actually, I think one of the first people I heard said was like G. Reed. You know what I'm saying? My partner G. Reed was called me Cash Shout Out. Shout out to G. Reed. He called me Cash Out Keys, man. And then, uh, shit. And after that, my other partner started saying it, and then that was it. I called you Cash Out for like a year. I didn't even know. I didn't know what you Tell you straight I up. I thought yeah. you were Cash Out Refi. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, thought thought you, I thought your full name refi. was Cash Out Refi. <laughs> Somebody else told me they thought my name was Cash for Keys. <laughs> okay. Man. I mean, but shit. You I mean, right. the thing about it is, you know. It's all It's all. all, it's all it's, it's, and all three things I do. All relevant. Yeah, it's all relevant. <laughs> all right. It's from cashing out on, cash on money wasting thing to cashing out on assets, man. Man, yeah. we got to yeah. let the audience know you have been a fan favorite since our first year with the YouTube channel. And a lot of our audience has been able to resonate with you. And said, man, when is Cash Out coming back on? Uh, I can't wait. I got to see him. So we brought him here to you. And we're going to talk about real estate today. You know? Let's talk about it, man. Man, how did you go from all the nicknames you said to, you know, Mr. Real Estate? So, man, really, I kind of knew that, you know, real estate was important, you know, because I basically was a real estate agent at like 18. You feel me? I said, man, let me try to try this. Let me get into this real estate stuff. But... Some of my various hustles, you feel me, made it to where I wasn't eligible to have my real estate license. So then, you know, uh, I was just back to doing other various businesses or whatever. And to be honest, man, um, one person that was really saying, man, we got to go door knocking, you know, keep me motivated to go find deals is my boy Kev, man. You know what I'm saying? He'll pull up to the house. We'll go knock on doors. Hey, Kev, real quick, come say through. Come here, come here, come here. We, we got a studio quick, audience. We got a, you feel me? Come on, come yeah, on. Just, just real quick. A quick embrace. Kev, man, you feel me? I, you I feel me? I'm going to do a quick <laughs> hug, man. All my brothers, man. Hey, yeah, so Kev, you know, he young, trying to get into the real estate. I'm in it, then kind of got sent, put put on a bench. But I, I, own, I knew to buy stuff, so I own real estate, landlord or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kev would come to that. I was like, man, let's go try to find some deals. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, but that's my partner, so that's what he's trying to do. And it seems productive, but I'm trying to kick up my partner, so I'm like, well, fuck it, let's just go do this shit. So we started knocking on doors, knocking on doors, not finding nothing, you feel me? But um, we e- did it. Explain to the audience why you're knocking on doors, because they don't understand. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, so door knocking is basically something you do when you are going after, you're trying to find a, a good price on real estate. You can knock on the door of a person who's losing their home. You can knock on the door of a person who, whose yard looks messed up or a house looks kind of raggedy. You just knock on the door and talk to the owner and see if you can purchase it. So we basically had made us a list and we're just knocking on doors trying to find a deal. You feel me? We do it one week. We do it another week. We don't do it for a year. He come back over. Come on, let's go knock on doors. So we back on it. At the time, he's basically working, too. He has a, a, a corporate job at the time. You feel me? So, we do it for a while, and then uh, we, we hit it we hit Real it quick, hard. what kind of experiences were you getting on knocking on the doors just so when people listen to you and they're about to do this, what are they about to see when they hit I mean, that you door? You're going to hear hell of no's, right? But let me, I'm going to get to that. You're going to hear hell of no's, and I'm going to tell you some of the experiences I have had. So, boom, we hearing hell of no's, hell of no's, whatever. You know, he goes back to work. I got some free time, so I'm still knocking. Boom. I go out like three weeks later, knock on the door by myself, end up finding a house with damn near a million equity, you know what I'm saying, or close to it, you know what I'm saying? So then it was a fourplex. I closed the deal. I'm like, okay, now I'm motivated. I'm seeing that, you know, uh, this shit can materialize. Like something can happen from doing this. You feel me? But from door knocking, there's things that I've seen. I done got doors slammed on me. I done knocked on the door and, you feel me, they invited me in the house. I see the, the 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 they fell behind because the husband is the one paying the bills and you know and not the wife. And now he's stage four cancer on his deathbed in the house doing hospice. 
I done seen knocking on doors, a person come pull a gun on me, tell me get off their porch, they gonna die in the house. You feel me? So then I ended up buying that house from the auction. <laughs> and I went back to the house to basically talk shit now because when he pulled the gun, I was thinking to myself, man, this man ain't going to do shit. But then a part of me was like, man, you know what? You got a gun. Be smart. Just go. So I left, bought the house from the auction a few months later. Now I got the receipt in my hand. I'm like, yeah, okay. So now I'm back to the house, knocking on the door, ready to talk some shit, right? And um, he doesn't answer the door. And I go to the side of the house. I see it's hella mail by the mailbox. I turn on a little water. The water's not coming on. I kind of looked at the meters and shit. So the power's off. So I'm like, well, fuck it. He left. You feel me? Hella mail. Ain't nobody been here. So I go to the back of the house. You feel me? And kick in the back door. And when I get in there, he slumped over. He done killed himself. In the house. He, done, he done shot himself in the house. Blew his brains out. I wasn't ready for this piece right here. This yeah, is he some blew his good. Brains out. So, I mean, really, you know, it's you, when, you, when you're when knocking on doors sometimes, man, you got to come at an angle of really kindness for real because, you know, yeah. you're dealing with a motherfucker who is going through something in life. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, you got to really come to help for real. You know what I mean? That's called empathy right there. Yeah, empathy. Gotta, Can we get the definition like the, of empathy? empathy? Man, so, <laughs> man, you've seen some shit. Man, for real. It's like, you know, like even. Somebody would have given up. You nah, know, you, nah, you can't give up. It's too much money on the line. You know what I'm saying? You. And the thing about it is, you know, I even got some partners that basically done bought, uh, bought, you know, when, once you invest your money, it's kind of hard to have tr- full empathy because at the same time, you know, your money's on the line, your money's on the mm-hmm. line and you empathizing for them. They might not be moving fast enough and it can cost you, to lose <laughs> that cost you a lot everything of everything you own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now. You know, and then they won't have no empathy for you. Right. You know what I'm Cause time is yeah. money. Every day mm-hmm. your money's on the line. And one of my pay- partners mm-hmm. bought a house from a dude. Dude gave dude a little bit of time to get out. Dude wasn't trying to leave, kept sneaking back in the house. My boy had to drop him off at the homeless shelter, you know what I'm saying? And keep moving about his money, man. And that's mm-hmm. just a part of the game. True story. Man, yes. what, what what do you have a question for for a piece after that. <laughs> no, Are you going to follow just, up the guy slumped over in the house? Slumped, I have I mean, no follow up on shit. that. I've seen, yeah, I've Call seen a lot of shit. Call yeah. the body here, clean these walls yeah. off, get my money, man. It's, it's just like yeah. that. When Caledon never let you try to blow up the entire house? Oh, Same yes. Situation. Yeah, we do have, <laughs> you going to get that. We, we, to, get to, to your point, to your point, <laughs> we do have similar stories. We had a lady who had, who turned the gas on, disconnected the stove, turned the gas on, and tried to blow up the house. And the ambulance came, fifty one fifty. They took her away, and uh, and like like he just told well, us, yeah, he went yeah. back inside. I called it. the nephew first because I didn't want well, her son because I don't want. I'm like, hey, I'm I'm calling fifty one fifty on your mama. Mm-hmm. Like I want you to be here when when everything comes. You don't want to throw someone on the bus like that. Just like, hey, hey pick up at the hospital. If you see me knocking on your door, <laughs> I come in peace, man. I'm coming. Yeah, in exactly. It's not me mad at peace, man. man. We both mad at the bank. I let them know that from the start. Like, mm-hmm. the bank is not our friend. We team up. See how much we can get from the Absolutely. bank. And let's let's, let's do try this. to see if we can get you alone. You feel me? But what I do when I knock on doors, the first thing I do, you feel me, I basically whisper because sometimes the situations where the husband might not be telling they, the wife they don't know. Oh, yeah, that's true. They don't, so yeah. I, I keep a player. I, I you know, true. I yeah, ask for the names, and I, you know, I try to talk and I whisper. Don't don't let the kids know. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You feel me? And that's, that's some you're just teaching them game right here. That's some real yeah, game. That's, that's, because, that's some know, wisdom. Yeah. You can't cut yeah. the house. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah, by the way, you're man, about to lose your house getting foreclosed on, man. <laughs> I, don't know where, I don't know where your kids going to be going, man. They're going to be out in the street, man. The sheriff gonna, you can't really come like that, really. You know what I mean? We're dropping some gems today. Yeah, okay? that is some, we're some, some gems. Yeah. I try to talk to the man of the house. You feel me? If he's there, if he's not there, then the mom is running the show, and I got to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? If the, no parents is there, I'll get a, you know, hey, how your mom call me or how your parents call me. You know, just start contacting yeah. really try to just ask them, do they have a plan? Okay, Keith, I got a question for you. Because you, we just brought up Cousin <coughs> Kevin, you know, and but you're making a decision because right now the circle that we grow up with is not the circle that is going to help us elevate in some cases. So how do you make the decision between hanging with the same crew versus Kev, who's like, let's go knock on doors on weekends? Well, Kev is the same crew, though. He, I basically met Kev back in my early, t- like early teens, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but they're not matching the energy, though. You know nah, what I'm but saying? He, he changed. He's a person that grew into in doing things that I like. It's like, you know, 
you're going to basically surround yourself with people you have common interests with or things you're like, even at a young age, mm-hmm. you and the, oh, them, they like, y'all like to dress. You're going to fuck with them. Oh, y'all like bitches. You like to get on bitches. Y'all going to hang with them. Oh, y'all all selling coke. Boom. You're going to run with them. Oh, y'all doing whatever else y'all doing. But then some people, they don't elevate because they keep getting stuck in that same circle. But what you got to do is figure out your interests and build a, a circle of friends doing that same thing. Like, man, y'all end up being Kev's cousins. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's just that now, you know, I got a circle full of people doing real estate. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? I got another group chat full of my friends that like to snowboard. I got mm-hmm. another group chat <laughs> full of my friends that. like do this and that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, We should put that snowboarding thing on the clip on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah you but know. E- even... <laughs> <laughs> Even during that, that like that phase of like you knowing all your friends, you Kev took off to school. You took off to school in different directions, and y'all still came back and connected. So um, really, really, we kind of. I was seventeen, and uh, I met Kev because Kev was basically. We first of all, real estate wasn't even a, a thought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was trying to go party, you know, and have some fun or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, he would come to Sac State because I was going to Sac State. And uh, that's where we met. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, he would come up there to visit his boy Chuck. Because Chuck oh, was there. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it's about having, you know, a circle full of people doing whatever you want to do. You may not be in the real estate, but you may want to learn how to do uh, some uh, some crypto shit. Or you might want to do some stock shit. Or you might want to learn how to be a, a auto mechanic or whatever. Mm-hmm. You got to build yourself a circle and go hang out with people that's doing that. So, with real estate, I did that. You know what I'm saying? But... There's other things that I'm trying to learn, and I got a circle full of people trying to, you know, you got to put yourself in a situation to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. L- let me take a quick time out because the audience doesn't know why I have this uh, Mr. T gold chain on, uh, but maybe you can explain to them what we're trying to do with the new flex in 2022. I mean, really, this flex is harder. This flex right here is harder than, you feel me, a, 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 a motherfucker with a diamond Figaro or whatever kind of chain with the diamonds that cost a hundred bands. You know what I'm saying? This is this is, this four. is property this keys. Is four inch <laughs> I got a little bag in a jury in a jury bag full of keys and my all my different keys. But and how much is these keys worth, man? Property wise, this, this, this is four million. Yeah, you feel me? Four million in property. You know what I'm saying? And my bag is somewhere like that too. Just a little bag with some keys, different properties. You know what I'm saying? Um, is anybody gonna kill us over this chain? They're going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to kill themselves laughing at you. They're going to be gasping for air laughing so hard. You feel me? Nobody but, wants um, your gender to keys. Hey, one thing about him, though, it's funny, right? Because he's really trying to change the flex, man. The man woke up and had a epiphany that, man, I'm getting rid of all my designer shit. And me personally, I don't buy much designer shit. You feel me? So today I wore this coat that I got from him, a, a nice Burberry coat. You feel me? And it was a situation where I met his condo in San Francisco and he's just like, <laughs> he's like, man, you know, I'm getting rid of all my all my designer shit, right? And I felt bad because I'm like, damn, Keish, you know, you're not going to even ask the boy what's wrong with him. What's wrong? <laughs> and look, at that point, all I wanted, I went in the closet, picked me out a coat, and I left. And I said, I'll call the king tomorrow and figure out what's going on. Because right now, I need to get out of this house with this coat before he changes his mind. You know what I'm saying? Because even though I got the money to do it, I really don't do it too often. Yeah, you, know you, you make so a lot of smart It moves. looks way better on you. And I, and, I, and I liked the coat, but I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to, <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, like, you know, hey, bro, why you doing waiting? Just think about this. Let's think about coat. this. I'm going to walk to the door as fast as I can. I'm going to say thanks. And tomorrow, call the king. Man, why are you giving away your stuff, man? Right. After I got the coat secure in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> why are you giving away all that other stuff? <laughs> no, no. I, no, I appreciate you throwing that out there because uh, for a lot of the kids that are watching this, young men and women that are on the journey and on that pursuit. Hey, why did you get a coat away? I'm, I'm about to hey, share it with you. Share, we're sharing it right it look, now. First of all, it looks way oh, better okay. on you. <laughs> it looks way better on you. Put the plaid out. Yeah, pull, yeah, pull the Burberry the out there. It's flexing. He's mm-hmm. flexing. Look, a lot of people will, like, I remember middle school, the first time I saw people die for Jordans, like yeah. literally getting shot for Jordans and starter jackets, right? So I, I we lived through that. So My show had a starter coat, but I ain't going to lie, man. I was young. I had bought it. From selling newspaper. Oh no, actually, I think my grandmother might have bought me my first starter. But uh, however, I got it, man. I remember just wearing it and some Jordans, and really like 
making sure when I got off board, nigga, I was moving fast to my apartment. Because yeah. you only, because why? Cause you hear about it in the paper, people getting down over, you know what I'm saying? Even right yeah. now, it's going right. crazy over the robberies, man. It's, but you know, when you got stuff like this property, man, it's stuff they can't take from you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. And, it's, and, and it means more than it has more value, you know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest with you, if, you know, I don't know, people, I think, me personally, I think that when I wore jewelry, I would wear it to impress women. I would like to think that other men is doing the same. You know what I'm saying? You know, but uh, what's going to be more impressive, man? A, a $50,000 chain or a motherfucking $4 million property when you're trying to impress a bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. um, hey, speaking <laughs> of, speaking of, speaking of, are there, are there bitches in real estate? Hey, to be honest with you, is, this, like, is there, are there uh, women in real estate? Are there women in real estate? There's, 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 there's women <laughs> in the real estate game, yeah, and there's some women running up a bag, and there's also women that like men in real estate because it's like right now it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Real estate is hot, so it's like they know if you're really in it, fucking with it, you get in the bag. So it's really groupies for real, just like um, any other sport or any other, um, you know, thing. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, you got to be smart because real estate has ups and downs. It has peaks and valleys. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people that's around here making real estate money that's spinning their bag, spinning their bag. As soon as they make it, they spend it enjoying life because the market's on, you know, kind of an uptick. But when it drops, you're going to see a lot of those people right around the mouth looking real, looking like Chris Rock, dope fiend <laughs> out, New Jack City, because they're going to lose everything. You know what I'm right. saying? That's why it's very important to stack units. This it's very important to get a rental income going. So when it hits the motherfucking uh, valleys and the real estate market is dropping and you're no longer to make hella money off appraisals or make hella money off flipping homes or selling properties. You can just sit back, kick your feet up and just collect that rent money and keep going until it starts peaking again. You know what I'm saying? So what you're telling so, the audience is real estate is recession proof. If you play it the right way, real estate is recession proof. If you're let me jump collecting in there, rental units real quick, because remember the last, rece when the last reception happened, we had like, we had real estate agents that became, um, pretty much day laborers. They kind of worked and, and cleaned out apartments for us mm -hmm. because there was no more sales. You sell a house, you make $2,000. We're in the Bay Area. Repo, cars, repo, everything. It, I mean, yes. they just was wearing so, a $1,000 Marnie, Marnie suits and doing it big and having the freshest car and popping their collar and doing this and that. Now, nothing's selling. You know what I mean? How do you I get past lie. that? How did, What information do you give someone to like, Man, hey, I when say, there's a recession, how this, do you do it right? What I'm yeah. doing this time different before I was buying houses Buying houses, not really trying to find good deals, just buying houses and buying houses and kind of waiting for it to go up in value. Not really having a plan to like when they're out. I'm 24 or whatever. I'm young. You feel me? You know, mm -hmm. just buying houses and just partying the motherfuckers. Out of three houses, two of them got foreclosed on. So when I came back, I realized, man, you know what? You got to basically look at the value. Make sure your mortgage is going to be here. Make sure your rent's going to be here. Absolutely. So I try to make it to where my rent, whatever I'm, um, however I get the property, the mortgage that I have to pay to the bank, the rent that I collect is going to have to be double the mortgage at least. So if I'm, if my mortgage is 2500 you feel me? I got to be collecting at least five grand rent. If it's because three grand, other expenses involved in that. Yeah, yeah, it'll so cover everything. Able, yeah, it's going to cover yeah. everything. And <clears throat> cover my, you know, my dinner bill and my kicking bill. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, for 2022, we're, we're, uh, we're really starting the message with it starts with one. That means it starts with your first property. Keith, can you share with the audience what was your one? What was your first property and the story behind it? My first property, man, like I say, I was a real estate agent at 18, so I knew to get property. So once they took my license, I went full throttle with just getting money, however I was getting it. I knew to buy real estate, so I had my first house. Like, I had bought a track home, um, you know, like first phase, you feel me, back when I was, I put the deposit down when I was 19. I think it was finished when I was like about 20. Mm-hmm. And I had equity in it. And that was my first one. But I was playing a rental game because what I would do, because I was still in college at the time, I, went, I would rent bedrooms out to, like, my college roommates. So we had a, a dope, brand-new five-bedroom house, uh, partying in it, you know what I'm saying, kicking it, you feel me? I'm but you were making living, money, too. <laughs> I'm, at the time, the way I was breaking it yeah. down, I was just living for free. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't really making a profit, but I wasn't paying no money to live. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? I wasn't paying... 
like my little portion of the PG and E, the water bill, property taxes, mortgage, everything was free because I'm busting it down, renting out four rooms for five hundred a piece, mm-hmm. and, and I had the master. So that's like house, <laughs> okay. that's like the house hacking. What we hear yeah, the term house, today yeah, yeah. is you you buy your property, you have a mortgage, but you rent out the rooms to offset your mortgage expenses. And yeah, I mean, shit, free. I was a, a single dude. I didn't really need uh, you know. I didn't need all of that space, but, mm-hmm. you know, and then I, and I'm, I'm living with some of my best partners, my mm-hmm. college partners, everybody's motivated to do better. You feel me? We, we having a good time over there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that was my first one, you know what I'm saying? And that, that was like, that was a good move. But then mm-hmm. I, I eventually sold that and shifted, you know, uh, back to the Bay area where it's like higher profit margins and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these people out here are looking, they see, man, man, these guys are millionaires, they're doing great, you know, but they don't understand that we take L's too, right? We take those licks, and maybe, Greg, you can go I ahead mean, and ask me. I really ain't been taking no L's. In your what career. Was, in your no, career. No, I'm, talking, I'm talking about lately. Oh, oh yeah. no, no, no. The okay. L's, what, like what? I said earlier, them foreclosures, it taught me, I learned, like, you, if you learn from your L's, that's still a win, you know give, what I'm saying? What, walk, the, walk, yeah, walk, give the, uh, the crowd example of what, what your L was. Like, the, let's just, in real estate, a real estate L, how did, the, buying, how did that? Ha- having money, buying houses, not renting them out, just going from house to house to just partying and hang out in and just... If I'm partying in Walnut Creek, boom, I see my Walnut Creek house. If I'm partying in Oakland, I see my Oakland house. If I'm partying in Sac, I see my Sac house. Doing dumb shit like that. Okay. Like, you feel okay. me at a young age? You feel me? So you didn't run like a business. You ran. You ran it. Yeah. You had multiple. Like, it sounds like you had multiple it, cars. Yeah, I wouldn't run it like nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know okay. But just, but at the time it was going up in equity, so it was still kind of good. But when it crashed out, I didn't have no. I only had one exit plan I only had one you know now when I what I do now since I did that when I purchase a property I have to have more than one exit plan like when I buy it I have to be able to sell it that same day and make a profit when I sell it I have to be able to rent it out you feel me and make double the mortgage on rent so I got either I can hold them I can sell them mm-hmm. I can I got options with that a, a B and C you have a B and C with and that I wasn't doing nothing you know what I'm saying yeah. so that I learned from that um actually you know it's not really a loss but recently, I just got a extra bill. Oh yeah, talk you know about saying? that. Talk How about many that. numbers are on that bill? <laughs> Can you sixty-two thousand dollar fine bill? Wait, sixty-two thousand dollars is somebody's salary in one year. Can you explain <laughs> multiple salaries? I mean, basically, so I I I've flipped many properties. I remodel many properties. I have a crew that works for me. I never ever hired a licensed contractor. Since this is one of the biggest projects I'm doing, I'm building for condos, I basically hired a licensed contractor. What he did is he demoed a higher percentage of the building that he was supposed to. And it's just confusing for a lot of people. Because so he tore too much of the building down. You have to leave yeah. a certain amount of the old building intact for it to be a remodel. He tore too much of the building down. To where now it's, it's classified as new construction. There you go. All right. And the city basically was mad that he did that. And they, you know, it's, it's a business for them too. So they charged me like five times the permit fee. So it ended up being to get my new permit reissued. $62,000. $62,000. $62,000. So this touches on a very important part that all investors and entrepreneurs go, th- go through. It's this. And he doesn't have to pay it. I do. But he does have insurance, so you got enough there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into the insurance, but this is a this is hard enough for some people. They would give up, or they would just say, "No, I don't. I'm in the wrong game. I can't afford a six, uh, sixty-two thousand dollar L." You know, I'm on this. But it's juice. not even the L. So it's a sixty-two thousand dollar bill because really, this particular property I bought for five twenty. Mm-hmm. The remodel, mm-hmm. um, I'm gauging it at about no more than seven hundred. Really, it's like six hundred thousand or something. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever think about giving up? That's where I was going with the question. Whether uh, this has been a fight, this has been a long, this has been such a long fight that you're I, in court. There's no, there's no giving up. Like just to get the project to where it is today, mm-hmm. you feel me? It was a fight, but no, giving up is not an option because, like I say, I bought it for five twenty. Mm-hmm. You feel me? The remodel was seven hundred. You feel me? So that's what is that? One point two two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So then, that property he bought for five twenty. Before he did anything to it, 
We offered him a million dollars. Yeah, for y'all that are watching this and <laughs> yeah, you want to know the backstory <laughs> behind the story, go check out the YouTube channel where we featured Cash Out right here. And he, he right. did a beautiful job on an Emeryville. Uh, it was a fourplex, right? Yeah, a three yeah. unit. But right now, once I finish it, it'll be worth closer to three mil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, four yeah. condos. Man, I'm so, I'm the 60,000, mm-hmm. even though it's a, it's a step back, it's still... A thousand steps forward. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You know where you know the values. You know, yeah, it's yeah. nothing. You know, it, yeah. and it's, it's no a, it's a traffic even, ticket. Even if it uh, was, or even if I felt like that, you know what I mean? I know that it was such a good deal that I could have pivoted and sold and did this and that. Mm-hmm. What do you do to improve? How how do you get stronger in real estate? I'm gonna show you how I get stronger in real estate. What do you do to get stronger in real estate? Man, I, I have conversations with you and and Kev and my circle of other investors. Oh, so that's probably what I should do. <laughs> so that's what I do. <laughs> I get stronger in real estate from from asking people questions and put my own spin on it. I, I, I ask him something, right? Then I hang up with him. Then I'll call him, yeah. get his opinion. Now I got two ideas mixed with mine for the third, call somebody else, get a fourth. Then I got a whole master plan, you feel me? Um, that's what I do. I ask questions and build Pick what on you it. want. Yeah. And, and, and put myself in situations with uh, in, in environments with people that I can ask the information I'm trying to get. You feel me? That's good stuff right there. So I, I do have a question. How did your environment growing up in the Bay Area actually play into you investing in real estate and become a real strong real estate investor, the one like competing in this market? Yeah. So, you know, I lived in Oakland until I was 12 and I moved to Vallejo. You feel me? So, when I would come and visit my dad in Oakland, it was a show on Soul Beat that a real estate agent called Kenny Sessions. It was called <laughs> Sessions Real Estate. He had a TV show. Shout and out I would, to Kenny Sessions. Yeah, and I would, I would watch this show. You know what I'm saying? Boom. You that never happens. know who's going to inspire you. Go know. ahead. I, yeah. Listen, so I'm watching that show. Mm-hmm. At that same age, I'm in, I'm in Target. You feel me? And I see a pretty woman. I get on her. You feel me? Shout out to Elise. You feel me? Oh, you still with her? And, and her and look, and her mom, Sharice, was in the real estate. Okay. So I'm okay. getting real estate knowledge from her mom. You feel me? Then at the same time, around that time, you feel me? Or a little bit prior, you feel me? Forty dropping. Uh, don't buy a. Uh, you know, now I'm in Vallejo. Don't don't buy a. What is it? A, don't, don't buy eight. Don't, don't buy car, eight thousand dollar car. Hundred thousand dollar car before you buy a house. Yeah, don't buy a hundred thousand dollar car before you buy yeah, a house. Yeah, yeah. So he's I saying that, that but then at the Texas. same time, I'm <laughs> hanging around. I'm hanging around individuals. With hundred thousand dollar card, I'll never forget, man. One of my uh, partners, OG partner, he was balling like when I was in high school. He was balling, getting money, but he was still young, cause he's maybe like I'm, I'm like sixteen. He's maybe like twenty three. Like he pulled up to the house, you feel me, and say, man, put this, put this, put this bag in the closet. It's his house. We in his house playing video games, kicking it. Put this bag in the closet. Don't look in it. Right? Boom. I go put the bag in the closet. Go back play video games. You feel me? He come back and put this bag in the closet. It's like garbage bags. You feel me? And don't look in it. So at one point, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm finna look in this shit. <laughs> so I open it up, man. It's a whole bag full of motherfucking money. You know what I'm saying? So I'm watching him ball. But then, uh, fast forward, he goes to the feds, gets out. I'm hella happy to see him. I'm like, man, what's up, boy? He got a Dodge Viper. Mind you, I'm older at this point. At this point, I'm older in real estate, all the shit. Because he went to the feds. He come home years later. And uh, I hop in this Dodge Viper. We ride it down. I'm like, oh, this shit clean, right? You feel me? And then we go to his house, and it's just like the most raggediest fucking. Uh-oh. Seen that before? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if what it, that do to you? I don't know what if that it, do to you? It, it, it just was like, man, it just showed me that, man, you know what? You got to have your. Because at that point, I had a clean car, but I had a house on. It just really showed me that I got to try to keep my priorities straight. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because he was getting money, but he wasn't really putting it in places where he can get more bread from. Yeah. So for the kid that might be really impressed by that Dodge Viper, they have to understand. I mean, that's a thing of the past, or just any car. Yeah, any, any car. car. You, any, you, you have to, uh, yeah, if you Let's have Let's say a, Rafe, because this motherfucker's in Rafe's. I done seen Rafe's oh, Rafe. parked in apartments. Lay, yeah, yeah you know lay your mean? head in a better in a better place than your Man, car. And this motherfucker's mm-hmm. with Lambos, where the house they renting is... I know motherfuckers with Lamb- Lamborghinis, but the house they renting costs less than the damn near the Lambo. Mm-hmm. They don't even own the house, but the money on the Lambo, they could be buying the house. Lesson. 
Lesson <laughs> before he said it, man, don't buy a motherfucking hundred thousand dollar car until you buy a house or really any property. You know what I'm saying? You should then try to get some a duplex or a, f- a triplex first, I would say. And the type of lady that you're trying to catch in that car is not the one to keep anyway. So hey, look, you're... man, look, hey, they'll get right in the Prius. I, I got a Prius. They'll get right in the Prius and treat you like you in the Lamborghini when your shit together. They don't ask me how I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> allegedly. Le- allegedly. 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 But, allegedly. But, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's everything that glitter ain't gold. You know what I'm saying? So just because somebody has a nice vehicle, whatever the case may be, it doesn't mean really that they really having their issue. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because that type of shit, you paying on it, but then it's losing value. Right. Yeah. So they losing money while yeah. they got it. You know what I'm saying? A lot right. of people that have nice shoes have dirty socks. Ooh, said it well. Said it well. Can you repeat that, please? A lot of people that have nice shoes have dirty ass, holy ass socks. Thank you. All okay. right. <laughs> so all the glitter ain't gl- ain't gold for the young kids who are watching this. But there's a lesson in all this, and we're gonna about to we're about to jump to the next lesson. We got our studio audience out here rolling on the ground <laughs> off camera, but we love them. Keep going. Bring that energy. Bring that energy. Um, <laughs> You know what? We got a top on. We got a topic that that is skirted around a little bit. I like to call it the new R double R. Okay, this is real estate and relationships. You know, this one isn't given enough attention, but it, I've seen it be, be the end of many investors and many couples because they don't have their priorities together. So, how do you manage real estate and relationships? I don't know, but I do. <laughs> I'm pretty good at maintaining relationships, though. I'm pretty good at maintaining yeah. relationships, though. Well, well, let the young kid, what, let the young, uh, what would you tell the young cash out? What the, what could they listen, concentrate on? Hey, one thing about it, though, right, you got to realize that you trying to build bridges, not burn them down, right? So, uh, far as any business, even if it's not real estate, you want to maintain good relationships, you know what I'm saying? If a person is doing something that you don't want to be around, you feel me? You don't have to end a relationship. Just fall back on them, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody could be used for something, you know what I'm saying? So you may need to go back and use them. If you got a friend that's, you know, always talking about you, every time you tell him something, they telling everybody, he running his mouth, he going back pillow talking with bitches, he might be a good party promoter, you know what I'm saying? You give him some information. <laughs> you give him some information to you trying to, you know, whatever you're trying to do. You use him to get the word out. You know what I'm saying? You so, just so tell don't him, burn the bridge. You don't burn, burn the bridge. You just, Man, that's some education you right there. You know what I'm saying? That way, that, you, that, way you build your, that way you build your community. You feel me? Listen. You build your you be you, you you build your community. That's you don't slick start right there. Yeah, yeah. isolating That's yourself slick. like niggas be like, man, I don't fuck with nobody. Y'all don't want the want want. Hey, listen, the nigga who's saying he don't fuck with nobody, if he having some money, he fucking with somebody because in order to do business, you gotta you gotta do business with other people. You know what I'm saying? That's so, a good lesson right there. I I I told this is the story I tell about like the business school, uh, just being in college and being in school. And at my uh, like information systems was one of my majors. Where'd you go to college, Greg? Uh, SMU, Southern okay. Methodist Shout University. Out to Dallas, Texas. SMU. Yeah. So. MIS. Yeah, MIS. Remember that? Remember that? It used to be a major. It used to be a major. And now I, I was. It's so crazy yeah. how it's so it's so crazy how man you, like you know one thing I noticed since I've been around I don't watch majors and jobs and different shit in the world become obsolete that means no longer needed you but but saying? this is what the skill was but real estate yeah. is always it always will be there lesson. but the skill was that we're we're sitting there and we're all mis majors and we have a there's one guy in the entire class that actually can develop and actually that knows job they can actually program and it so we it was so many people in this class he did the homework and the people that failed weren't able to build the business relationships it's like we all turned in the same homework. It was one person's homework. So you cheated off the smart guy in the room. That's what you're saying, right? That's what like everyone. Yeah, that's okay. what you do. I that's, graduated. That's, that's life. That's business. I, I graduated. That's business. And hopefully, what I'm about yeah. to say, they don't come back and take my degree. Yeah. <laughs> but I cheated my way through college. You know what I'm saying? And it was a situation where the 9/11 shit happened. Business relationships. Motherfuckers are scared of my Muslim yes. brothers. You know what I'm saying? They scared of Bin Laden. 
I'm fucking with everybody. I'm fucking with the Asians. I'm fucking with the whites. I'm fucking with the blacks. I'm fucking with the Muslims. I'm fucking with whoever, the Pacific Islanders. Who, I'm fucking with everybody. <laughs> but uh, what I found out is, man, one of my, uh, one of my boys, he is from Jordan, right? His name was Radcliffe. Yeah, okay. I'm fucking with Radcliffe, right? Mm-hmm. I'm fucking with my boy Radcliffe. And, uh, and Radcliffe, basically, every time I got to class, <laughs> every time I got to class, my boy Radcliffe would already have the answers to whatever test we're going to take from another one of the people in this Muslim community that took the test earlier that day. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. Radcliffe is like me. He's going there. He's partying. He's bullshitting like me. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But he had a line on all the answers. So I'm, I get to class. I'm kicking with him. We already got the answers to the test. You know what Isn't saying? that business though? That's business. To me, business yes. is, is looking what other motherfuckers is doing. If it's working, putting your spin on it, and you doing the shit too. Lesson, lesson learned. Lesson, okay, man. We're not creating new businesses right now. Hey, man, listen, it's uh, my nose itching a little bit. It's nothing new under the sun, man. It says it in the Bible, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, A new way, a new way, you know, to do it, or a new way, however. But it's really nothing really that new under the sun. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the basis of it, you feel me? So. I mean, you're not really inventing shit hardly, you know what I'm saying? You might put a trademark on a new idea, a new twist on it, or whatever the case may be, but it's all been done. Same product, different hat. Yeah, yeah. I think we've, you know, we, w- one thing that we all have in common up here is not only that we, c- we can all flex the chain, you know, but we have uh, children, you know, and what do you want for your kids? What, what is, let's talk about legacy your kids and how you're getting your kids to have the right mindset to, to make, to make Man, it. You know what? I, I, I'm going to be honest. I feel that I want my kids to be sharper than me. I really feel that they are sharper than me, but I don't know if they're going to have all the hustle I got in me. I really think they probably got more, but who knows? But even if they don't have that, you feel me? They're going to be able to live a comfortable life because I'm stacking these motherfucking units. And when I'm through with them, I can give them to them. And long as they can manage them to collect rent, make sure the property taxes is paid, they'll have an income out the gate without having to go to work. You know what I'm saying? But the goal is to work to and add to it. Because people, you know, um, you got two different kind of people, man. When you give somebody something, when you give, from what I notice, mm-hmm. you can give somebody something and then one person, they'll take it and just blow through it and spend it. Another person will take it and add to it and make more from it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say Donald Trump was a smart dude, man. You know what I mean? His brother wasn't getting to it like him. They both got left some bread, but Trump knew how to finesse and make more from it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You, you have a red hat. You want to tell the audience about <laughs> I got a red hat. I got a motherfucking blue hat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, whatever you are, I'm the same. Let me tell you. Whatever religion you okay. are, I'm, 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 I'm going to pray with you. Let's, about the, the whatever, whole Whatever political party you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to that rally with you, man. The truth, the truth aspect is what I, I, I learned on that mm-hmm. is that what we take, we look at our children a lot and we look at them as, as a, like appendages of us. So if what we did not have in life, we give them like just us. Like mm-hmm. if I had soccer balls, cones and goals all my life, I'd be a professional athlete. If I had this, 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 I'd be a professional athlete. If I had this, this it, that, that's how we build ourselves. But then we realize much later in life that, you know what, we're actually not raising ourselves. We're raising two separate individuals or kids. Are, they're separate than actually what we're actually building. Mm-hmm. They're definitely different than us. And you got to give them their own kind of freedom on that. Mm-hmm. And j- our and struggles are huge. Like, our they, struggles are different. They differ. You know why? Because they had different experiences. Like, I think what you experience yes. in life makes you who you are. Like, even though y'all are brothers... And y'all experience a lot of the same thing. You feel me? You guys are different because at the same time, when you was in the fifth grade and he was in the fourth grade, y'all was experiencing different things. Absolutely, Absolutely. You know yeah. See, but when that. y'all go home, y'all probably experience the same things. But we share so notes. Yeah, y'all notes. similar, yeah, yeah. but at the same mm-hmm. time, you guys got your own personality. What did mama say? Mama said to you, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, you were favorite too. Like uh, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> how we compared notes. She said the same, yeah, same shit to know, me. <laughs> like you said, build bridges. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's how we we navigate. Um, I like I, I like a big I like a big I like a big circle of people I like having a big network mm-hmm. I like having hella friends I like that type of shit you know what I'm saying I don't like being 
I mean, there's certain shit you can't tell everybody. I know that. But at the same time, you know, somebody can do something that ain't really all the way the best shit. You know what I'm saying? But I still a fuck with they ass on a certain level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they did something to me that was kind of shady, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't put myself in a situation for them to do something shady. But I, like I say, I ain't going to cut their ass off because I can still use them for something. Yeah, I like that party promoter uh, example. Yeah, that, 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 that is a, yeah, beautiful example. That was yeah. a great example of yeah. <laughs> Burn Bridges. But, you know, there's some kids out there that are growing up in neighborhoods that we grew up in who think that they've got to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a professional athlete to make it out. Um, but we that's better than nothing right right but sitting in the these athlete chairs, is a little bit harder because that's more the hardest. On, that, that's that's like skilled politics you got a better chance of becoming a doctor or lawyer if you just go do the work and do that the athlete yeah. shit it's a whole lot of politics and it's only a certain amount of room it's a lottery on the bus i mean on the bench and the bus and the whatever else but it's more room for the doctors and lawyers though right but to the audience to an eight-year-old out there do they know that you can make more money as a real estate investor than you can a professional athlete in a lot of cases? We've Not all cases. Over and over. We proved that over and over. I mean, but you know. Can you let them know? So it, it, it's, it's a situation where, like, the, it, the, the, the motherfuckers that's just on the team, I'm running circles around them, but it's income wise, star, income, income wise, mm -hmm. not on the not on the basketball court, not on the football court, income wise. But those star players, you know, they run it in circles around me. But I know that when you're self-employed, you know what I'm saying, sky's the limit. You know what I'm saying. So if I start busting the right moves, and stop being lazy, you know what I'm saying, I can do anything. You know what I'm saying. But it's like I gotta really hit the gas. You know what I'm saying. Right. But at the end of the day, that's earned income. They are trading their time for money. Anybody, doctors, lawyers, okay. they're all. I mean, they, what are they, we doing? they they salary is set. Mine ain't really set if I put the work in. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I ain't gonna lie. If I could trade it, I probably would want to go. If I really like basketball or something, I wouldn't mind getting LeBron's paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, what, what, we're the but that nigga on the team that don't get in the game that we don't know his <laughs> name, just, I I wouldn't want his paycheck. Listen, all of us all of us are under seven foot. <laughs> I'm under, six, I'm, under, I'm, I'm under six foot. And we're all making athlete money. Yeah. So we didn't have, like, genetics. And we fucking they bitches. Yeah. Let them know. He's, let, he's telling the truth. He's, he's telling the truth. Okay. We locked the door and we put a master lock on the outside door in case any of them try to get in during our podcast. But, Keith, that's about, that goes back to real estate and relationships. Yeah, man. We make sure y'all on the court, man. <laughs> when we see y'all on the motherfucking court, we know it's cool to have her come by. <laughs> True story. I think we've got a story right now that's real, but I'm not going to go there because we are on camera. So I'm going to let that one slide, and we're going to move to the next topic. What would you tell young Keys? I mean, you, like, what would you tell Man, yourself growing up? Man, this one of the things where I learn something new every day. You know what I'm saying? So if I know what I know right now today, and I'm going to learn some more shit tomorrow, I would tell my younger self, look, dude, you could basically find these houses, you feel me, this way for a good deal. When you get them, they got these loan programs out that you could basically, you don't have to show your tax returns or your bank statements or nothing. They'll give you a loan based off of how much rent the, the, the building is collecting. So you could basically show that, you feel me, without showing none of your financials, get a loan on the house, pull all the money back out, and just keep doing it. And just keep stacking units, pull the money out, but not to buy a car or no jewelry or nothing, to buy more units and just keep Invest. adding to your monthly income mm -hmm. and your net worth and your equity. I would tell myself to start doing basically what I'm doing now 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Because then it would be, if I would have started doing what I'm doing now, you feel me? Because... You know, you could damn near buy a house with no money if you just find a good did you need, structure. Like did you need a college education to do everything you're doing? Did you, like Man, I'm going to be honest with you. I used my college degree two times. I used my college degree one time um, to show probation, man, so they see that I got a college degree because that probably meant a lot to them. So I wouldn't have to check in, show them that. Then other time, I rolled some weed on my shit. Them the two times I ever used my college degree. One time showing probation, other time. I couldn't find enough to roll no weed on. I just what? broke it down on my fucking college degree. <laughs> and where's that college degree from? Sacramento State University. Shout out to Sacramento State. They make great papers. Hey, but I tell you this though. <laughs> you don't know, but, hey, but one thing I can say about college, mm -hmm. it basically took me out of my 
element in my environment and threw me into an environment that was different. Everybody wanted to learn. A, amongst hella different kind of people, so I learned how to deal with different people. Like, to be honest with you, I wasn't really around white people or anybody non-black. Uh, uh, Filipinos, because Vallejo got a big Filipino community, so I was around Filipinos, and I was around Mexicans, but predominantly nothing but black people. You know what I'm saying? And um, I can't tell. <laughs> this is number, this is <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing but black people, right? So <laughs> when I went to college, I went from being around nothing but black people to basically being around nothing but white people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I started you know, seeing that a lot of the stuff that I, you know, thought was a norm was not the norm. You there you saying? go. Because yeah. you're a product of your environment. Yeah. And for my brother and I, what was life changing was going from the public school system to the private school. You know what, Dad? When I I called Dad whenever I was uh, about to, I thought I was about to go. Howard was my first choice, mm -hmm. and then I called Dad. I called Dad, and I was like, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm going to Howard, but I can go to SMU too." Mm -hmm. And then he said, "He said, who runs the world?" Uh, I don't even know what he's talking about. I had it was too heavy. No, at the time. yeah, it was too. I was like, "What do you mean?" Mm -hmm. And he's like, "I'm going to a black. I'm going to a like historic black college." Mm -hmm. Or I can go here. And he's like, you know what? Like, you need to, do, like, the white people won the world. Like, don't go here. Hey, I'm going to tell here. you this, though. I needed to go be around some white people. But you know what, though? Being around some sophisticated, you know what I'm saying, African-American black people would have been just uh, as good as being around white people for yeah. me. Because that would have been a different environment. Because when you go around, you know, Black people, but all these black people, man, they grew up golfing and riding horses. Their parents been having money and what they want. That that opened my eyes to something new, different. You still found you your niche. Different too. You still find your niche in the other school. I'm gonna find my niche. Yeah, I'm gonna find my niche. Just like I did. So Listen, yeah, I'm gonna find it's my niche anywhere. And same Sac route. State was it was a great experience for me. You know what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. was, I mean, every experience is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have fun with it. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. Well, well, to your point about being able to see black excellence, and the Divine Way was born last year. With that in mind, just trying to let people know that we're out here. You can touch us. You know, we're not too we fancy. Exist. Yeah. You know, so what do you think? Hey, what's listen, your vision? Man? And you can start from way. nothing and end up with something. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Everybody could do it, man. You can really not have too much of nothing and just bubble. You feel me? Yeah. So what would you like to see? Do you, do you, what do you think about the divine way, what we're trying to do? And are there, you know, what, just your feedback on, on what we're trying to do in the last year? I fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you know, I watch the show. I mean, I fuck with y'all outside the show. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? We spend more time outside the show than on the motherfucking show. You so know this what I'm is, saying? yeah, this is, this is really real life. So, right. So, I mean, you know, it's good because we, you know, like anytime I'm dealing with something or got a question about something of a panel of 10, you feel me? Y'all are two. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it might be eight. Other motherfuckers I'll call other than y'all to make my executive decisions about decisions that I'm making in my business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I have a real question about about how, like, when we first met and we first got brought in all together because because we learned in the Bay Area there's a lot of silence going on between our own community. So we don't really teach one to, 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 to elevate. It's um, a lot of silence because a lot of it depends on what you're doing, though. You know what I'm saying? Because... But you know, I was talking to my boy the other day about that. He said, "Man, such and such, they don't, they don't. Uh, I, I talk to them, but they don't really. They be hating. They don't give me the information. They're not gonna tell you all their secrets. But really, the goal is for you to listen and use your brain, and you figure out whatever they tell you is gonna be more than you probably already knew. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So you talk to them. You get a little bit of information, whatever they're willing to tell you, or you gotta ask questions too. If you're not asking them the right questions, how the fuck are they gonna know what to tell you? Because Unless they crazy and just start talking to theyself, you feel me? They're not gonna really say much. You gotta kind of bring it out of them by asking questions. But anyways, talk to them, get the information, talk to somebody else, get their, use your own brain. You know what I'm saying? And then let that be a start, and then get on YouTube, type in some other shit, and learn from there too. You know what I mean? You know some of the shit they may do them. It might be illegal what they doing, so they can't tell you every single thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can't be mad at a motherfucker for not wanting to put they. Um, they livelihood in your hands. Well, you talked about this. We've talked about this off camera about people who will reach out to us on social media and ask us to uh, teach them real estate. But it's but it's frustrating because they they don't even want to go learn the basic fundamentals. They want to come to you and help you. So basically, they want you to solve their problems for them. 
right? You you touch touch on that just for a minute. Man, really, I don't got really that much time to solve your problems. I got my own problems to solve. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but what and, um, advice would you give that person who... Hey, my advice for you would be come come over here, come holler at me, let me show you how to find me some deals. You feel me? <laughs> let me show you how to find me some deals. You'll finance them. Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel me? And you'll make you some money. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually, it's one of those situations where once I show you how to find the deals... If you find one and you don't want to bring it to me, shit, run off and go do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but add value. Basically, you're saying yeah. if you're gonna come to me and take my time, if you're gonna come to me and take my time, man, what's in it for me, dog? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have hella time. It's only 24 hours in a day. I'm basically got. I got four kids. You feel me? I got my own shit that I want to do with my life. I got my business. I got this and that. I don't really have hella time to be just basically holding everybody's hand that really wants to help. But if a motherfucker's coming. That wants to help me help them is easier. If you help More me help you, I yeah. can help you. you Lesson: me? If you're not trying to help me help you, then why the fuck do I even want to? You're not trying to even help me help you. <laughs> why the fuck do I want to fucking do anything for you? You know what I'm saying? Because now you stopping me from doing the shit I gotta do. Right. And it's times where I do put my shit on hold. Yeah. To go do something else or fair for somebody else. Um. And, and I do it, but I ain't gonna lie. Like when I do it, in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, handle your shit first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man. All I'm saying is, it help me help you. You know what I'm saying? If you helping me make some money, I can help you better. You know what I'm saying? So help me. Basically, no, you know, I'm gonna I'm cut. Help me make some motherfucking money. <laughs> I'm gonna cut straight to it. Help me make some motherfucking money. And if you help me make some money, you're gonna make some money too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you want me to help you. Make some money, but there ain't no money in it for me. And it's like, damn, dog, what's, what's in it for what, me? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, what right. are you doing? It's 24 hours a day. I can't give all my time away. Like, motherfucker. Well, Man, well, somebody well. told me, you need to basically be. No, shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> look, this, look, this, somebody told me in my Instagram. What did what, she say? What did she say? Listen, she told me, you need to be. I can't remember exactly what she said. Just give them the basic. But yeah. she told me, I need to be doing X, Y, and Z on my page. You know, bitch, you do that on your page. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bitch? Don't try to do all my shit. So there's pocket watchers and there's there's clout chasers. No, I. They, what is it? What was she no, trying to do? Just she trying was to dictate trying to the day? Basically, no. She was trying to tell me I need to do with my time. She's you know trying to saying? make you feel a certain what type she, of way. She made me feel no kind of way. She wants she me to. <laughs> she wants me to do on my page. What she's do that on her own page. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's talk about the power of social media. What do you think? about what's going on with Instagram, now the metaverse. I mean, honestly though, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm just, I ain't doing nothing but having fun on my page. And like, it's, it's, when I'm doing my Instagram shit, I can have fun and kind of give knowledge. That's when I can give knowledge away for free because I'm just right there, it's a second. Y'all can watch it a million times. I'm not stopping what I'm really doing. I'm doing what I'm doing and Showing you what I'm doing, mm -hmm. why I'm doing it, and still getting my shit done. There you go. Opposed to stopping what I'm doing to go do some other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think I haven't really made too much money off my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I haven't really even tried to. I'm just on there really clowning around, having fun, and, you know, teaching motherfuckers by showing them what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Yeah, I think the people that are watching and following you on Instagram, and by the way, for our audience that don't know where how to find you, where do they find you on Instagram? Cash Out Rich Kid. Cash out rich kid. Cash mm -hmm. out rich kid. All one word. Cash out rich kid. All one word. Okay. You know, basically, you know, you were, you came out the womb with a broom. You, you came out ready to work. You know, you had hustle day one. So let the audience know uh, some of the other things you did prior to real estate. Man, I give you my whole work history. Break it down. Um, I like that one. Came out the womb. With Man, the listen. <laughs> when I was when I was like nine or ten, my first little job was really honestly though. When I was like six or seven, I'm going. It used to be these magazines called Boys Life magazines, and on the back it'd be hella pictures of toys you can get if you sell a certain amount of things. So I'd be going door. But prior to that, I'd go door to door with my mom while she was selling Avon. So then I'm going door to door with my mom while she's selling Avon. Then I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm finna go through these apartments and knock on these same doors and sell whatever they trying to get me to sell to get certain toys. Mm -hmm. So, boom, I'm doing that. Then I went from that to selling red ropes. I'm like nine or ten at this point now. I'm selling red ropes at the Cal Stadium. You feel me? 
making some bread. Um, but I would sell like 300 red ropes or 200 red ropes. Then they give you like about 30 red rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A red okay. rope is a... No, no, yeah. Tell the audience, because we a, Eric a sold red ropes. A red rope is a big, long licorice. <laughs> yeah. It's a big... A, a red rope is a big, long licorice, like a super yeah. long licorice. Mm -hmm. So I would sell red ropes at the Cal Stadiums during their football games, and I sell like 300 red ropes, and then they'd give me like 30 bucks at the end of the day. But since I was young, I would take it, go buy some CDs or whatever. But then I'm like, man, this, this is hella work for this. So then... My next job was Oakland Tribune. My boy was like, he's selling newspaper for Oakland Tribune. He goes to the West Oakland Bar Station. But I'm like, well, fuck that. I'm finna get my shit. I'm finna go where the rich motherfuckers at. So I got my my um, Oakland Tribune bundle, and I would go to, like, the Rock Ridge Safeway. You know what I'm saying? Like on uh, Broadway and, um, like, Broadway and 50th, 51st, 50-something. Mm -hmm. But I would go there, and I would gurp. I would sell, like, a hundred and... 60, 170 papers every Sunday, but I would keep the dollar and give Oakland Tribune a quarter, right? Because the papers was 125. So o Oakland Tribune would get a quarter, I would get a dollar. So I'm making 150, 170 uh, uh, every Sunday at like 10. You know what I'm saying? So what is that? If I'm making 150, four, that's, what is that? How much is that? 600? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? A month. So yeah, that shit. Then it'd be 170 sometimes. So. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm running it up. I need to saying? speak to the honest. This is this is a, a lot of crazy sim similarities into everything you're saying and everything we did. Like it, Eric sold Eric sold those ropes at school. I used to go to my mom because we sold paper route subscriptions. Mm -hmm. um, that mom's got attacked by a dog. When you <laughs> watch you get your mom yeah, yeah. Yeah. for for a dollar something subscription. Yeah, we're the, <laughs> so get, get in the car, get in the car. Watch you get attacked by a wall. But, but like, I got a I got a lesson in this. It's, it's a weird kind of dynamic. We all, we all have the same similar backstory because we all have, were born with that. Is this hustle. the juice though? It's like what is it? Man, no, it, it it is. I mean that shit kind of start. I mean really it just starts from wanting more. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And exactly. I tried to install that in my kids by basically taking them to the dollar store, letting them buy candy, right? For a dollar and then go to San Francisco where a high traffic area. I can't tell you they spot because they still gurping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But go to a high traffic area where it's hell of foot traffic and sell those same dollar candy bars for two dollars. And since they young and they, you know, people wanna, you know, spend with them. So they'll go there and gurp, man, sell, you know, a couple a hundred, hundred candy bars, one fifty. Like my oldest son, I started him doing it when he was young. He would catch Bart over there, do it, get his money. Um, and then my younger kids had them doing it too, you know what I'm saying? So they and then once they get the money, then I go take them to like like save some. But then I would go take them to go like spend a little bit so they see, oh shit, when I get this money, I can go get this and that and make them really start liking that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's good. My auntie, she basically my thing down there, my first paying job besides, because when I would do Avon with my mom, mm -hmm. she a single parent. I'm just walking with her while she hustling. I'm not getting paid. But my Aunt Jackie, I go to her house. She'd be like, oh, take out the trash from me, and um, I'll give you like 50 cent. So I'm like, okay, boom. I get to take out the trash, get the 50 cent, and then right then and there, you feel me, I'm hearing the ice cream man coming. Right, so then I got fifty cent to go buy ice cream, and it's like, oh shit! You put it together early. Yeah, this is yeah. what it's gonna do. This I, yeah. I was trying to always have a little bit. So, what mm. is the goal for uh, for cash out in real estate? What is the long, the end game for cash out? Shit, man, you know it's a game called um, cash flow, and if you you know, I think you get to like 50000 or something like that in cash flow, you in the game. So I'm trying to, that shit came out a while ago. I did like the, the math on a, um, on a uh, inflation calculator. So I think my goal right now is just to get 90 a month cash flow. I'm getting closer. Mm -hmm. It's happening more rapidly now because I'm in my swing of things. Now I'm able to like, since I got, the, the audience doesn't understand 90 cents. Oh, 90. So $90,000 90. a month. <laughs> okay. okay. So $90,000 a month cash flow means like $90,000 a month. Not include me net flipping income. a house or selling net, just yeah, rental. net income. Just collect without doing shit. I need 90 grand coming in without doing nothing yep. a month. That's just my goal. But it's one of the things where when I get to 90, 
I'm going fucking. You don't want. Yeah, because it's like when you get to 20 yeah, or 30, yeah, yeah. it's like it's nothing. You just want more and more. But it's just something to do. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, just sit back, man. You know, be able to spend money, work less, kind of still ball out. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just keep adding to it. But it's it, it's happening faster now because now since I got assets, I'm able to buy houses without coming up with more money just by like, okay, I'm trying to buy this house. I can tie this house up. Let's say I'm trying to, let's say this house right here is 500000 mm-hmm. And this house over here got five hundred k equity. I can basically put a loan on this house to buy that house. And then once I buy it, refi out, pay that one back, and then have a loan on this one. Excuse me, I just burped drinking this drink. We are on the <laughs> right hand smoke, right? You feel me? But uh, You're still rolling papers on that college degree, aren't you? Man, I haven't done it in a while. I, I got to go find that shit for real. <laughs> I don't know where it's no, at. But, but finish it. We got a lesson that, that, I, that cash out is Hey, but going you know. to college is not a bad thing. I'm no, telling no, you, it's, no. a, it's a good no, no, experience. No. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And it's, it's one of the things where, you know, it's a lot better than sitting at home because you'll figure out it'll help you figure out what you're trying to do because you're going to be around other people that want more for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you hear ideas and this and that. You know what I mean? You're just stepping up neighborhoods. That's all you're doing. You go to college, you're stepping up neighborhoods, you're stepping up people that are actually trying to do something in life. And it's young motherfuckers you people, your age yeah. and your peers and you going out your element and you, you'll meet people outside of that group that you've been with your whole life. You meet new people with new ideas because with new people come new ideas. So, so continue but, to challenge um, yourself. Yeah. In anything you're doing, there's yeah. a lesson mm-hmm. in here. But I interrupted you on the lesson about leverage. You talked about how owning real estate has allowed you to leverage. Okay, you can go Google the definition of leverage. That means you have an asset that you can essentially borrow against. So basically, I can have some money. I can have a million dollars cash sitting right here. I don't have to spend any of that money to buy real estate because I could basically put a loan on another property to buy another property and then put a loan on that property to pay that other property off and you know and just keep doing that and then you'll turn like you feel me one into a billion you know there what i'm saying go. like you could just keep doing it you know um but the key to that is you have to make sure whatever properties you're buying they have equity in them equity you know is I mean? key yeah because if you don't have equity they won't let you do it and then you know and you have to make sure that it's still able to cash flow like even when i do that i'm making sure whatever my mortgage is the rent I'm collecting is fifty percent is like double that. So whatever the, if the if the mortgage is seven grand, I gotta make sure that this property when I collect that rent is gonna be fourteen grand. Man, well you know what? This has been so much fun. We've gotten to the bottom of our glasses. So we need to wrap this thing up and off camera we're gonna celebrate. And you know we'll we'll pull up pull one of the Jonathan. man. I, w- I, I really yeah. wish y'all to ask me the particular questions y'all want to know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, because we yeah yeah. Well, Greg, you have any other questions? I mean, not. I mean, the people is watching. Yeah, what they, the they, fuck do yeah. y'all want to know? What the, what the fuck do they want to know? I don't know. <laughs> because I can't answer the questions y'all want to know because, you know, y'all not asking. You know what? The, the goal is to put this content out, let our audience see it on YouTube, listen, listen to it on our podcast, and then comment on it. If you want to ask, Those cash comments, out some yeah. questions. What's your goal? What's your goal? What's your, what's your real estate goal? I'm living it. I'm sitting next to you having a cocktail with a fire burning behind our ass. And we're going to hit another glass and set our black ass outside. That, your, I'm living it. And what's your goal? Your real estate goal? The real estate goal is... is uh, let, me tell you, let, let me tell you about these two. This, when I first met Greg, I met Eric the same day, right? Eric, <laughs> Eric how, 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 how Greg explained it to me, Greg was like, man, you know, I'm the nerd, man. I do this, 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 and this. And then Greg coming through, yeah, oh, I, fin- I got finesse this, I finesse that. Eric, yeah, Eric. So it's like, yeah. so yeah, yeah, Eric, Eric's like, I'm finesse, finesse. So Eric's a finesser, you feel me? Greg's a nerd, you feel me? Because this is two of them. He does the numbers, this and that. He has a mouthpiece to close the deals. And I said, well, damn, it's a little bit of both y'all and me. Because yeah. it's just one of me. I got to use the motherfucking mouthpiece and pull out my calculator and do the numbers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, so what's your goal? My goal is th- so. There's a lot of people I've been I've been around, and we go around people in San Francisco, and I I, I meet people that own pretty much half of San Francisco, and they have this rental income 
that that just brings them enough that money that they will just never generational they're just set for life so then that's what i'm trying to achieve and one thing i did when i got in that situation i, I went and asked a question because eric and i would move properties in east oakland I, I was like hey how did you know to move your property and the the answer to me was i've never moved a property and I instantly knew right at that que- right after I got that response that I can't talk to this dude because we have nothing in fucking common. So I need to talk to people that are actually moving up and achieving things just like we are. So my circle is better than the, actually the circle that's actually out there right now that own all the shit. Mm. But we, because we, we, we hungry. We're we are hungrier than ch- ever share, been. I want to share a story with y'all, man, on what let me know that it's very important to stack rental units. So it's two people I'm looking at. One of them, he's a flipper. Flip, 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 make money, blah, 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 this and that. Another dude was his helper. He was learning how to flip from the flipper. But then he started keeping a few, keeping a few, keeping a few. The flipper was flipping, spending his money, making money, spending it, making money, spending it. The dude who started holding properties to collect rents, he's growing, he's growing, he's growing, he's growing. He's growing. So now... It's to a point to where, and both these guys are older than me by a lot, and I'm learning from both of them, but it's to a point now to where the flipper, when he needs to borrow money, or if I need to borrow money, we both got to go to his guy that was his protege <laughs> who was stacking units. It's, a, now he it's got, the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? Yeah. He got so many units, he he's just having the fuck, he's having that bread, so I see, see Keith right now. You need to stack the units. And then the flipper is crazy because he'll still tell, oh, man, sell that shit with the room. He's still like that. But I'm like, mm-mm, nope. Because I see what with the money source. I see, I see what the money source did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And what he did is he would buy a property, you feel me, remodel the motherfucking property, rent it out, and refinance and keep doing it again. So now he got hella money and hella properties and hella units. And he's sitting back with his feet kicked up collecting rent money and not having to go out and look for deals and do hella shit. He, he, you know, he can get fat and lazy, you know what I'm saying? Lesson. That, uh, the way you broke that down brought, it, brought me back all the way to the tortoise and the hare. You mm. know, we all want to be the tortoise, uh, the, the hare. Like, run fast, get to the goal quick. But, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, tur- I mean, it's, it, the tortoise and the hare, man, you know, the, tur- the tortoise run, the, the tortoise won the race, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, steady. So that, yeah. that's our goal. So, you know, for, for this year, I really hope that our audience can, continues to tune in because we got great special guests. You know, Cash Out, you're a fan favorite. We really appreciate we, you coming on today. We got a lot of knowledge coming from, from everyone that's, that's sitting in this Man, I, yeah. I, I got I still got a brain got full a, of yeah. game. It's a it's brain a, full it, of game. It, it's like a brain that. full of game. He got a brain full of game. You know, he got a brain full of game. And it's about exchanging knowledge, you know, just making your your commission, your cabinet of motherfuckers who you want to basically ask questions to and get information from. But this real estate shit, man, it's like so much that you can do in this game. Like people ask me, I want to get in real estate. The first thing you need to do is figure out what you want to do because it seems like right now every element of this shit's making money. People doing loans making money. Real estate agents making money. Flippers making money. My The person that does my... um appraisals oh. he's charging 1500 oh motherfucking yeah. appraisals. don't even get started that appraisal three, three, four right appraisals now. a day yeah you know what i'm saying and like right, right now there. right now we need them so bad to do if you're trying to buy a house you need an appraisal you're trying to do a loan you need an appraisal so they getting cocky like you know what i mean you know so it's it's so much stuff you can do in this game it's not real estate it's not just one Thing. It's like mm-hmm. a whole variety of things that make this whole shit work. You know, yeah. even in construction, you know, yeah. contractors, this and that. So figure out what you want to do first, and you can do more than one thing and just go after the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I'm doing might not be what your gift is. Your gift might be something different than my gift, and you might be better at your gift than I'm better at mine, and you might be able to make more money off your gift than I'm making off mine. You feel me? So you got to just figure out what it is in this real estate game that you want to do, get on the internet and, and just get on YouTube, Google different things in real estate and figure out what exact, what, what thing you want to, what position you want to play. Maybe different real estate roles. Maybe if you Google different real estate roles, 
or different real estate positions, you can see all the different positions that make this thing go and figure out what you want to do. Simple, just let me drop this knowledge. I have a uh, one of our investors, one, someone that works with us, um, electrician, owns five properties, probably about seven or eight doors, and he does not collect his rent. He basically has hundreds of thousands of dollars stacked on my brother's desk. And I, I come in the office sometimes, I'm like, Greg. He doesn't need it. <laughs> why the fuck doesn't He's this guy come get his money? Because <laughs> he was the tortoise. He held the properties. And how old is he? In uh, his 30s? So yeah, yeah, definitely. He's in, in his, his 30s. 30s. Yeah. Like, hello, mm -hmm. y'all yeah. hear that? This guy has checks that he, it just stack in. And, and I, yeah, Greg but I has to call him and remind him to come get his I money. I said, yes. So that's the kind of problem you want to have. Yeah, you know? I still have one. <laughs> yeah, he, he hey, Chris, probably. pick up your fucking money, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to Chris. <laughs> pick up your fucking Chris, money. I see your goddamn checks. <laughs> that's a good problem, man. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the power of the Divine Way TV. We have a network of these stories and these people that are our friends are in our circle. So... You know, we've got game on top of game on top of game to give the audience. So, uh, man, I really appreciate you coming today, Keith, because yeah, you got that, me. Man. I'm glad you had me, man. Yeah. I came over here. You feel me? Got me a motherfucking free drink, free Burberry <laughs> Coke. <laughs> Last time I was here, I ain't no telling what I'm going to get when I come, man. I can't turn down offer. <laughs> hey, man, so we appreciate you tuning in to the Divine Way TV, where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And thank you for blessing us with your presence today, Cash Out. It's all good. Remind the right. audience where they can find you. At your, at your bitch house when you at work. <laughs> there playing. we go. Nah, you heard him. Hey. He's not playing. Hey. Now nah, I'm though. playing. I try not to fuck nobody, bitch, man. I just be joking. I try not to, man. These niggas will kill you over that. <laughs> okay, so continue. if you think I'm fucking your bitch, I'm not. <laughs> and if she, if you can't find her, don't come looking at my house because she might be there. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, cash out, rich kid. Cash oh, out, cash rich out kid on Instagram. Kid. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> right. thank you for tuning we got, in. We got until next time, man. This has been fun. Yeah, all right. We're empty. Let's clank, let's let's clank it. All right. Let's, let, let's mine is cheer, full of bro. water at this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have we're another one. Nice. All right. All right. Tune in to next right. week. Love y'all. Gym for you. All right. We're out.